Oh, uh, we're about to go hit our second episode we're dropping on YouTube. I'm pumped about it because it just means that we're crushing goals and staying consistent. Uh, we're going to talk about some a lot of fun stuff about B2B businesses and, and who's hitting Amazon right now. We'll get more into that later. Uh, let's hit the studio. What's up guys, we're back in the studio. Uh, the title today is why brands, manufacturers, and B2B businesses are all streaming to Amazon, running to Amazon, and what that means for Marknology and what we're helping those businesses uh, accomplish on the platform. So what I've been finding is that um, you know, Marknology specializes in this in this branding space on Amazon and really working with brands, uh, not necessarily wholesalers, resellers, private label, although we do some of that. We're mainly working with manufacturers and brands. And what that means is lots of conversations with, with the same about uh, what it means to get on Amazon, what it means to a company uh, like Spanish Gardens locally, that's an 80 year old company this year, uh, that's going to e-commerce for the first time. What it means for a company like Murdoch uh, Manufacturing that's been um, in the B2B world for 120 something years. Uh, what's it mean for Fallis Starch, which is another local brand here uh, that's never been uh, off of a Walmart shelf or a Target shelf and going to e-commerce. And we're helping them navigate that. And there's different challenges that come with that than strictly an e-commerce business. And that's some of what I want to cover today. One of the hardest conversations I have with, with B2B businesses or businesses that have done things a different way than e-commerce is simply thinking differently than they have before. Um, you know, the easiest conversation for me is with the owner uh, or someone that's, that's more behind changing the, the way things have been done with that company than, um, you know, people, people below him. And it's really because we need to change almost an entire mindset uh, within the company. I think one of the most harmful things, and it's cliche, but one of the most harmful things is continuing to do things the way they've always been done and expecting different results. Like, that's crazy to me. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm constantly having these conversations with B2B businesses and thought I could bring you guys some value uh, about some of the things I'm telling them and why they need to work with an expert on Amazon. For a lot of brands, it's, it's overwhelming for them to think about taking on something as big as, as social media and online brand presence and understanding a website and e-commerce and making that work and a blog and email and Amazon and, and eBay and all of these things. Uh, and we, as Marknology, like to come in, not to make this a sales pitch, but really like to come in and say, like, let us solve one of those problems for you. Uh, with Amazon being 50% of online sales, it's, it's a big one to tackle first. One of the main reasons, um, that I come forward to these brands and talk to them about the, the benefits of being on, on the Amazon marketplace is branding control. Um, if you're not there, someone else could be there uh, selling or representing your brand. So they might have outdated pictures of products. They might have outdated packaging photos or, or copy that's not as complete as you'd like it to be. Who knows what kind of emails they're sending to your customers after they've bought your product? Do they even care if they leave negative reviews? These are some of the questions I'm asking brands uh, that don't know what's going on on Amazon with their brands or if they're selling to a reseller uh, or a wholesaler is, are you talking to your customers? Do you think that your resellers um, are advertising on your brand name? Do, are they reaching out to customers that have a bad experience and making sure it's an awesome experience? The only way to really do that on Amazon, in my opinion, is to have brand control yourself and be talking to those customers yourself. I believe that uh, a lot of brands have push the easy button when it comes to Amazon. And for them, that's you know shipping product in bulk to a reseller uh, that's gonna put them on Amazon for them and manage the whole process. Or they, they sold and signed a contract with Amazon five or six years ago. I have brand after brand after brand after brand that I'm working through that with now uh, to help them understand we had a retail relationship, a wholesale relationship with Amazon selling direct, and now we're trying to get it back in house so we can have more control, we can talk to our customers, we can enjoy that, that extra margin that's there when you're selling direct yourselves. Um, brands just wanted the easy way out before Amazon was big and now they're coming back and having to clean that up. What does cleaning it up mean? That means 
Maybe you have 50 resellers on a product. How do we get that down to a manageable number or not at all? How do we get it down to three resellers? Do you have e-commerce agreements set up in place? So I'm throwing a lot at you, but what I'm really trying to think of is these are the things that B2B businesses are having to face when it comes to Amazon and either they're tackling it by themselves or they're working with us or they're not doing anything at all because they're frozen not knowing what to do. So really it comes down to just tackling these piece by piece by piece um, and a lot of that happens you know in introductions and later uh, you know what I'm telling them is that we have to start tackling this from a um, a long term game plan so we can't just immediately come in kick everyone off of Amazon that's been selling on there implement map pricing because we have a one trademark that allows us to do all of that but it has to be like where do we want to be in a year from now or in two years from now on the Amazon platform and what do we need to start doing now to get us there for a lot of people that's uh, setting up e-commerce agreements with their resellers, if you haven't done it, something you should think about doing. Um, you know, using third party, third party uh, other companies like Marknology that can help you enforce uh, map pricing or resellers or sending season and desist to people that shouldn't be selling your product. You know, it's, it's probably once a week I get a call from uh, a partner of ours that's like, oh my God, I just found our product on Canada. It shouldn't be there. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? and uh you know walk them walk them back off the ledge and you know just tell them like hey there's some things we can go through to figure out who it is selling this product and this is what we need to do in the future to keep that from happening again so if we're policing resellers uh if we're trying to figure out who's there part of it is cleaning up who's already there and then what can you do in regards to brand gating or these these agreements that can keep resellers from so easily being able to come uh, and sell your brand on the platform if you don't want them to be there Let's talk about map pricing for a second. So minimum advertised price. And there's a lot of information out there. Um, a lot of people I talk to think that if they get brand registry 2.0, uh, which just takes a trademark, uh, you being registered uh, with the government of having a trademark here, you can get kind of control over your listings. And they're like, can I use that trademark to control map pricing or my resellers? And the answer is no. It allows you to control your photos and get back control of your brand in some ways and uh, really control your content. But map pricing is something that you have to enforce outside of Amazon. So if you're selling to reseller X and they're not adhering to your map pricing, which is like, you know, uh, brands use map pricing to be able to keep the value um, of their items high, then you need to work with them off of Amazon and negotiate with them and set yourself up for success um, by quit sending them product. Um, if they're not listening to your rules, um, stop selling them, selling to them. There's be a, there'll be a lot of other wholesalers or, or people out there that will take your product and sell it for you. Uh, there's no need for you to continue working with people that won't um, keep your brand at the same standard that you want it. A lot of B2B businesses are talking to me about counterfeit. They're worried about Amazon copying their product or they're, they're in fear about counterfeiters from China or they've read some blog that's fear-based that's probably from other Amazon sellers trying to not get you on the platform so they can continue to dominate. But there's other things like uh, there's counterfeit programs at Amazon if we really are worried about uh, people copying your item. Um, if you have a patent, you don't have to worry. We can definitely uh, exercise that through brand registry. But if you have counterfeit, there's different programs like the transparency program where you can get serial uh, barcodes on your products that if someone doesn't have authorization to sell your product, um, they would have to scan this transparency code in order to ship it. So there's, there's things that if you're working with an expert, you can really know uh, how to move forward and be protected at the same time on the Amazon platform. Okay, I mentioned briefly brand gating a few minutes ago, uh, and that's kind of what comes after you get rid of maybe this, this uh, saturation of resellers that you have selling your product. And so brand gating is something that you can get. It used to only be available to uh, really large brands like Nike and things like that, where if you didn't have permission to sell those products, uh, you weren't allowed to sell them. Um, a lot of resellers talk about this, how to get your brands ungated so that you can sell them and resell them. Uh, but for brands and manufacturers, it's a way to protect yourself uh, from people selling your products that, that you wish weren't. So let's say you get your resellers all cleaned up and it's just you selling on Amazon. You're not sharing the buy box with anyone. Uh, you've got you know 100% buy box. 
Uh, and But you wanna keep people from being able to, additional resellers to sneaking their way through and selling your products. Well, uh, there's hoops you can jump through in different ways. I won't give all of that content here, but you can jump through some hoops, uh, you know, send off some forms, and basically get your brand put in a position. If, if you're a large enough brand, have a good enough reason um, to have Amazon gate your brand from allowing other people to sell. Uh, this is a great way of um, protecting the brand in another way. And it really is a, a conglomeration of all of these things uh, that allows you to protect the brand, not just one or the other, but minimum advertised price, resellers, e-commerce agreements, um, brand gating, working with third party uh, vendors that are looking out for you as well and making sure other people aren't selling your products. Uh, and it really, takes, it really takes a partner or a whole team like embracing that to protect your brand on the platform. Okay, so we've addressed some of the reasons why you wouldn't sell on Amazon or why some of these brands or manufacturers are scared to get on the platform, these horror stories that they've heard about Amazon. But the truth is there's a lot of money to be made on Amazon. And besides just having control of your brand and being able to talk to your customers, um, that's reason enough. But making sure that, you know, a, a small, uh, you've been working years, like, you know, you've been working years on your brand outside of Amazon. Um, and then just to leave Amazon unpoliced where anyone can advertise on your brand name is, is kind of craziness to me. Um, take a search on Amazon, see if some other sellers are bidding on your, on your logo or on your name um, and taking advantage of the branding you've done to sell their products. So this is a way that, um, you can protect yourself, you're talking to your customers, you're touching your customers, maybe you've got um, some inserts in your packaging that's allowing you to engage with them. Um, these are the kinds of things that brands need to be doing and if your customer base is on Amazon and you're not there, they're buying from someone else. So these are all the things to think about. If you're a business that hasn't been on Amazon before or you're nervous about getting to Amazon, uh, there's a lot of education out there. Uh, a lot of people are coming from different sides with it, but this is stuff we go through every day with B2B businesses, um, even before we start working with them to help them understand about the Amazon platform. One of the last things I wanna talk about is the margins. And this is really where the money talks. Um, you know, if you're selling, if you've been in a B2B relationship with your business, um, you know, you're selling a lot of times at a wholesale rate. You know, you're selling at 50% margins and you're used to that and you've built a business around it. Now, Amazon can be a place where we cut out a lot of those middle people. We go direct to the customers. And you know, even if you're, if you're using uh, Amazon, maybe you're getting an 85% margin if you're shipping it yourself. Maybe you're getting a 70% margin if you're using FBA. Maybe you're getting a 55 or a 60% margin. But how many of us would be happy with just a 10% margin increase across our business? I think a lot of brands and manufacturers would. And that's why I go into those conversations confident because I know that there's extra margin to be made. And at the end of the day, that's doing nothing different than changing the way that you're selling and then making more money. So if we sold $10 million at uh, $10 million worth of product at a 50% margin, we're talking 5 million just to make the math simple. But imagine if we were selling that same $10 million in product, but instead of getting 5 million, we were getting 6 million or 7 million with a 70% margin. That's the type of math we're doing with these manufacturers and brands. And that's why everyone's running to this Amazon platform because there's a lot of money to be made uh, in, in regards to, to margin. And there's a lot of ways that you can touch your customers better. And, and that's the point of, of having a brand is, is your message speaking to them across whatever platform they're on. And we're here to help brands and manufacturers navigate uh, all of those difficult questions um, and, and fears that a lot of them have when it comes to selling on Amazon. So I went quickly, but we covered a lot of topics and I haven't heard a lot of voices out there really talking about these issues when it comes to, to businesses on Amazon that aren't built for Amazon. But these are the questions that are holding people back. It's also the questions that people are getting answered that are causing them to make a lot of money and see a lot of growth in their businesses. Uh, you know, this is my second video on YouTube. I just want to start hitting you guys with some content that maybe you haven't heard, uh, maybe you've been looking for on Amazon, kind of give you a new way of looking at, you know, brands and manufacturers thinking when it comes to this platform. And if you're a B2B business or maybe you're not, these are some things that you need to address or think about um and research when it comes to selling on amazon or talk to a professional that maybe has already been through some of this uh that can work with you to make sure you're set up for success on the platform so i'm signing off i'll see you guys soon i'm going to keep kicking out awesome content and hope this has been helpful for some of you